one go on. Why is that? It's a string of one Oh, oh my god. Um, question. Um, I have a question number five. Number five, can you just do it for the time? Because, like, I understand how to do it, but there was, like, it says that, I mean, you get negative 200 pi plus 80 pi, and I got, um, sorry to the interruption. Can someone from custodial please go to the second floor outside room 233 for a large film? Thank you. Um, it, I got, like, a negative 100, um, Plus 80, not negative 200. So you only got tw negative 20 meters per hour? Um, yeah, maybe 25. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, no, oh, it's it. This is number five. And then, okay, so let's, let me just go through the whole problem. So, um, DRDT is one, DHDT is all negative four. And we're looking for DBDT when. R is five and H is and we're gonna use volume is pi R squared H. Um so okay, do it. D D D T equals so pi is a constant, right? Constant multiple, so we can kind of take it out. Can we write R in terms of H? Or H in terms of R? Or did you just differentiate based on using I the product? Differentiate. Okay. So then you do uh, this is a product, right? Okay, so then it's the derivative of R squared times H plus the derivative of H times R squared. Right. This is going to be two R D R D T times H plus D H D T times R squared. So let's look at the information that's given. D R D T is one. Hmm. The R D T is one. One. Oh, oh, wait. Am I looking for that? Number five. Oh, five. Sorry. Sorry. The R D T is one. one. The H D T is negative four. So we know that the radius is five. Two times five times the height, which is negative four. Right? What's that? Oh, did I put in? Oh, I did it. It is eight. Sorry, I did DR, DHDT. Um, let's see here. So, eight. The plus negative four times r squared, which is twenty five. So this is the question: like, what does this come out to be? Mm -hmm. That's eighty pi times eighty minus one hundred. Yeah, it is negative 20. There is a typo. Will, is that the typo you were talking about? No, I just, I was talking about this thing. Yeah, it should be negative 20 pi, not 120. Good 
touch. Um, DVDT equals this meters cubed per hour. Is the final answer. Solution is in there. Yes, you should. Unless it says not to. Uh, I have a question about number one. Sure, what's up? Uh, you use the recent formula x squared plus one squared equals c squared. Mm -hmm. I take the square root of that x, then I go I go move by the solve. I took the square root first. Yes. I did x plus x squared plus one squared square root divided by the Okay, so hold on. So I get all this. Yeah. Make sure. Okay. So we're on number one. D equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you take the square root of that? Okay, so you did D D D T yeah. equals wow. so that's one half times x squared plus y squared to the negative one half times the derivative of x squared plus y squared, like that. Okay. So this is times the derivative of so that's two x dx dt plus two two y dy dt. Okay. So is that what you got? For uh, the so far, yeah. okay. Okay. So then what do you plug in? Uh, I found that doing just velocity and time and y doing velocity and time, but uh why the value is different than that? It's T minus one, that one? Yeah, T minus one. Okay. I got the same number. I got 60 and 40. 60 and 40? Yeah. For X and Y? Yeah. Okay. So equals one half 60 squared plus 40 squared the negative one half times two times 60 yeah. times dx dt is given as 30 plus 2y oops what y uh, 40 right times dy dt is also 40 2y yeah times 40 Okay. And I don't know why I just got the wrong result now. Well let me see. Let me let me let me maybe this comes out different. I don't know. So two times sixty times thirty is twelve times three is thirty six. Thirty six hundred plus one sixty. So sixteen hundred times two is thirty two hundred. Over two times the square root of sixty squared plus forty squared. Fifty two hundred. Oh yeah, don't worry about wrong because I got the line at this corner. So oh okay. Yeah. I think I like 
So let's see, let me just finish this one. Doing it your way. Okay, 100 plus 3200 is 6800. Over 2 is 3400. Divide by the square root of 5200. Seven point one five. Is that right? So yeah, you made a, an error with this. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Okay. Any other questions? Yep. Go. It's kind of on this. So what? What problem? Oh, on this problem. Okay. When it's a problem where you have like two. Yeah, it's yeah, essential, yeah. You need to do that. Yeah. All right. So I, I didn't do this one so I but you can't. I the only way I can think to do it is I did not do it. So this this is a ladder problem where the ladder is changing length. Yeah. That's all. Number six. Number six. All right, so a person who fell, who is six feet tall, sorry, is walking away from a lake. Oh. Uh, here's the lamp post. At a rate of 40 feet per minute. So if we call this x, right, then dx dt equals 40 feet per minute. Uh, when the person is 10 feet from the lamppost, the shadow is 20 feet long. So this, if x is 10, then this is 20, right? Okay, so if x is 10, y equals 20. So you can think of that whole thing as 30, I guess. Um, find the rate at which the length of the shadow is increasing. So this is going to be the length of the shadow. The shadow, right? What? Yeah. I could have called it a. I could have called it S. Yeah, I don't know. I just like if it's wide, then the amount of height. Okay. Um, I'll call it S. It's just a variable. Um. They call it S in, in this answer field, anyway. right? When it's 30 feet from the lamppost. So you're looking for DS DT when X equals 30. Right? Do we need to know the height of the lamppost? Does it matter? So what we need to do, this, this is like a similar triangle problem, right? So we need to relate X and S, correct? Um, S, is that gonna, how is that related to X? So S equals two X, okay, so can we just differentiate both sides? Yeah, yeah. You'll get the equals two dx dt, right? Mm -hmm. Forty ds dt is two times forty feet per minute. And 
at 80. This is an easier solution than the way they did. Is this the one that you tried? Uh, yeah. What'd you get? Well, I tried all of them. Uh, 900. That's 20. Yeah. And 900 related to the left side of the left. Side. So, can you even find the height of the, I guess you could find the height of the lamppost, right? If this is third, if this is uh, what, 20? 20 is to six as 30 is to H or something. If you did it that way, you, you could actually get the same answer. So I'm wondering what happened. The, the X plus y. Here, x plus s is the same thing. So x plus s is to h as s is to 6. Does that make, does that make sense? I think is that how they did it? Yeah. But you don't need to do that with these. As long as you can relate the, the two quantities that are changing, then you're good. And that's what we did here. Yeah. Right. And you already know how S is related to X. X. Or you can create that thing twice, twice what it is. In fact, it doesn't even matter that it's when X is 30. The length of the shadow is going to be increasing at twice the rate, no matter when. And the question is about what is the how is the height changing now a different question is how far away is the tip of the shadow from the base of the lamppost or how quickly is the tip of the shadow moving that's a, a little different because um it's, it's just a different different question altogether it's it's similar but you just have to relate it to this whole thing. So you could call this, you know, the S is the where the tip of the shadow is. And then you would have to relate this to X. And that's not too hard to do because you know when X is 10, this whole thing is 30, right? So you can just do it that way. Are there other questions? Who found the problem that they chose easy? Okay, so what was different about it than the ones that you did before? If you, if you didn't find other ones easy. Okay. So if we can general as well, I mean, we like triangular problems. When you're finding the distance of B, you can find the Yeah. Why? Okay. So pra that, that's a matter of practice. Okay. Nick, you were going to say something? I didn't understand three of first from the last one from the So like looking back, I think three is a good call. What was that one? It was the ripple of the fall. Oh, okay. I think I just got overwhelmed when I was talking. Something you've never seen before? Yeah. Okay. Matt, did you hide your hand up? Did you? I know, like what I was saying about four plus four one. I knew I could solve it. I just didn't know what to do. Like when I, when I started thinking of the distance form, I just knew it would work. But I didn't know, like if X could find X one, I didn't know the answer to that. Uh, but knowing that I can just use like Pythagorean theorem to make it work. Okay. Anybody else comments on these these five problems? Did anybody 
just do the one? Raise your hand if you just did the one problem. Okay. Um, did you look at the other one? Did you look at all of them or just pick the first one you saw? Okay. And what made you pick the one you picked? Okay. I don't know. I was confused by all of them at first. Okay. Which one did you pick? Well, I guess the one I technically picked was um five. This is the one I asked the question on. Okay. Did you do other ones? Yeah. Which ones did you do? All of them? Okay. How'd you do? Good. And I thought it wasn't too bad. Like I don't know. I feel like these ones, like everyone said, like they're they're just easiest. I was a little stuck on the shadow one, but I think I once I figured out the ratio, now I understand it. Okay. So what is so you think the wording is just different? It's, it's like it's, it's like three sentences, and then some of them are like well, a paragraph. And I think we know what formula to use for the most part. So let's think about. A more complex one. Yeah, we are So what is so what really is the snowblower question? Like what is it really asking? Yes, that's so. That's the, what it's looking for for an answer. But it's asking you to find. Go ahead. Yeah, it was a minimum. You had to find the minimum time, right? And what does that mean? Yeah, and then solve it. So there's a, I guess there's an additional step in those. But if you think about it, there's really not much difference between this problem and any other similar triangle problem or something like that. They're, they're really the same. There's just one extra step, right? So. Like, let's go through a snowblower one right now. So we could do the swimming one. Sure. Okay. Getting a negative, yeah, radical. So a swimming one. Um, so here's the river, right? Here's the finish line. Uh, we know that this distance is, I don't know, a thousand feet, right? And you start over here. You can go through the water at, I don't know, five feet per second, we'll say. And you can run at 12 feet per second. Just make it up. Or 13. Let's do 13. Where should you swim to? So how do we start this problem? By the way, this is the snowball problem. It's, it's all 1,000 feet. That's 1,000 feet, yeah. This is the exact same thing with the snowball problem. Oh, the time is for the snowball off the field? Or the space of the snowball off the field? So we need to move on the same time. And then we need to pass the lake and then we can do the river because 
Okay. So if for example you put a five feet times y to be specific and the water. Okay, so so we'll say we'll call this distance y. So we know that five feet per second times y plus Okay, so now here's the here's the question. Where on this diagram is X? Is this X? Okay. So what you're saying is 13 feet per second times X. I'm running a thousand minus X. So 13 feet per second times a thousand. Minus x. Okay. This is the total time that it's going to take. Is that true? No, that's the total distance. Right? Yeah. This is rate times time. So this is the total distance. Is that what we want? Okay. So the time is going to be y over 5 feet per second. Okay. This is going to give me um, time one. This is going to give me time two. Because distance equals rate times time. So time equals distance over rate. This one might even be easier than a ladder problem. I don't know. So what we're looking to do is to minimize the time, right? So that means we need to find the derivative of time, set it equal to zero, like we said, and solve it. Okay. So here we go. Oh, do we know how far it is across the water? Yeah, I do. So let's see. We'll make it. 61 feet. Hmm? Say that one more time. You can give it a variable shift. What do you want to give it? J. Z. Z. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, so he, so this is sixty one, right? So what is how how can we write y in terms of one of the other variables? Let's do it this way. X squared plus 61 squared equals y squared. So that. Is that what you were saying? Okay. Okay. So we actually have this in terms of x. Okay. The total time is x squared plus. What is 60 plus squared? 37.21 to the one half over five feet per second plus 1,000 minus x over 13 feet per second. Oh, no. 
This right here is a thousand minus x. Okay. All right. Now what? <laughs> what do you think, Will? Um, it's supposed to differentiate the the new time equation um, is that time equals zero to solve for x um, time or x. Okay, you're using different notation, but okay. Uh, so you don't set time equal to zero. You set the derivative of time equal yeah. to zero. Okay. So we, we got d, d, uh, dt d, uh, t, right? Yeah. Equals, so I'm going to actually take out the one fifth here and the one thirteenth to make this a little more palatable. You could actually distribute the thirteen, the one over thirteen here, if you wanted. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, to make it a little easier to, to look at. But I guess it really doesn't matter. But this is going to be one half times one fifth is one tenth. Right? X squared plus 37, 21 to the negative one half times the derivative of X squared plus 37, 21. Right? What's the derivative of X squared? 2X dx dt. Plus zero. Yeah. Plus the derivative of this. And it looks to me like that's negative 1 13th dx dt. So really just minus. I'll the question. What's, um, what is I, I'm not top of D, but the. Hmm? Uh, the big T? That's the time it takes to go through each each thing. Each. The time it takes to go through the water or the the smaller T is the time it takes to go through each of these sections. But it's really related to X here. That's how that's how I did it. We we said we set um, we found y in terms of x, which is why this one is one thirteenth, and this one is one tenth. Okay. So I think I found the derivative here. Um, we need to set this equal to zero and solve it. Okay. So this is like part one. We we can't come up with a specific time yet because we don't know what we're trying to do. We want to minimize this, right? So Jordan, you had said you had trouble finding something because you only had one variable. Does it make sense now? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you basically just write it in terms of x. All right, so we want to Rewrite this so that we can solve it when it's equal to zero. You with me on that? And, and why I'm doing it? Graham, you with me on that? Okay. So let's rewrite it. So why do we put it zero? So okay. So that's okay. Who can explain why we're, we're setting the derivative equal to zero? Because we need to find the minimum distance. Well, how are those related? You know, zero, like, zero, zero distance. 
Mexico. What is the derivative? We can't forget what we learned early on. What is the derivative of give us specifically uh, as far as the curve goes? Gives us the slope of the tangent line. It does not give us the tangent line. Right? And when the slope of a tangent line is zero, what do we have? A minimum or a maximum, right? So we're setting the derivative equal to zero because we want to find when that tangent line has a slope of zero. Right. Okay. Equals dt equals. So I'm going to put two x dx dt over ten x squared plus three seven two one to the one half. This minus. Um, 1 over 13 dx dt. Now I can simplify it a little bit. I'm going to make that 2 tenths. What do you think I'm going to make it? One step there. So that's 1 over 5. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. Do I know dx dt? 13, right? Go ahead. Nope, it doesn't. Because we wrote this in terms of x. Correct. It's dx dt. That was 2 tenths, right? Because 2 times 1 over 10. So that's one over five. Okay. So, Jordan, does that answer your question? Like, why we don't use one? Yeah. Okay. So, dx dt is thirteen for both of them. What does this end up being? Negative one. Negative one. So we need to, yeah, go ahead. Uh, why? Why do you need to reach 13? Why do you need to reach 13? We did choose 13. Right, why? Because that's dx dt. Remember, this is x. How is this changing? Uh, yeah, we could have written this whole thing in terms of why. And done that problem the problem the same way, but we would have used five. Okay. Um, okay, so looks like I'm gonna add one to both sides. Right? One equals thirteen x over five x squared plus three seven two one to the one half. And then I can multiply both sides by five times that whole thing. So we get five x squared plus three seven two one to the one half equals thirteen x. Um, I would probably square both sides to get twenty five times x squared. Plus three seven two one equals one sixty nine x. So let's just kind of take a step back and see if this is making if this makes sense mathematically. How many minimum? So how many solutions do you think there are to this problem where we're trying to find the minimum? You think two? Would it not 
squared. Yes, it would be x squared, yeah, but because I squared both sides. Well, the maximum, no, it, it wouldn't be. I don't think. Um, because there's an infinite number of maximums. I think. Well, you could just, you could, well, uh, would there be a Well, yes, but it would, it would take longer if you, if you. If you went, if you met way, way down there, it would take longer. The question is, is it, if you swim the whole way, it would take longer, actually, if you went over here and then over, right? So there's like, there's. More maximum to this than like if you were solving No, you're still setting it equal to zero. You set you're setting the derivative equal to zero. Remember that. We're setting the derivative equal to zero in solving. Okay. So well, we would have to write this we would have to write this in terms of y okay and then this would be 1000 minus whatever this is okay so let me see here set it equal to zero we're solving it right um so it looks to me like this is 25x squared plus whatever this is clear 25 times 37, 21, 93, 025 is 169 x squared. Yeah, what I would probably do is do 169 minus x squared minus 25 x squared, which is what? What is it? Wait, well, is it 169 minus 5 x squared? Yeah, is it 144? Yeah, 144. x squared. Oh. Equals 93025. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. So divide both sides by 144. 646 square root, 25.41. So this is going to be 25.41. So the other solution represents here. And thousand minus X. Uh, the finish line being over here, I think. So what was the real challenge here? Um, I have a question. Um, when you got the five um, times x squared plus uh, 3,721 yeah, right there, why couldn't you just take the square root of the x squared plus 3,721 and not square root both sides? Not 
not square root both. And not square both sides? Yeah, not square root. Because that, though, the Does it give you the same answer? I don't know. I, I was trying to solve this for x. Um, I don't know how you would solve it without getting rid of the radical. Yeah, but since these, like, the, those are perfect squares, like x squared plus the, the square root of that one plus 61 or whatever. No, no, it isn't. Oh. No. So, there you look. It's the square root of eight, not four. Yeah. Uh, we need some units when you get two answers. A minor bunch of Well, okay, so think of it this way. Oh, okay. I'm glad that helped. So what was the real challenge here? Tell me. What what did you find the most challenging part of this problem? Oh come on. Right, right. Okay, so you gotta pay attention to detail, yes. Knowing what the different response, like uh, how to address the problem. Okay. So to, to talk to speak to that, think about the big picture. What is the problem asking? So set a goal. Like when, when you look at the problem, say, okay, this is asking me to find the minimum of something or the maximum of something. What does that mean? And that's when you have to take a derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve it. Okay? Because maximums and minimums can be found that way. By finding the slope of the tangent line when it's equal to zero. Or by finding when the slope of the tangent line is zero. Uh, I think for me, I only got started by tangent line. I don't think it's in my. Is that like just the basic thing? When we talk about This is Pythagorean theorem, the distance formula, yeah. Well, this is right. So yeah, this is a this is a leveled four problem. This is a hard problem, I guess. But is there anything in here that we can't do? Yeah. So I, I know there's been. Um, some frustration with, with sick days and stuff, and we had to keep moving this test. <laughs> Are we ready for this other test? That, is it a problem? Or is well, <laughs> not this exact problem. It's, it's basically like. I mean, there's like a set of problems, like the ladder, the data, go down. Mm -hmm. So I can like use what I know. But once you like, if you throw in a new related rate, like weird different scenario, then like I have no idea what yeah. to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah like for that, I get mixed up with the input to like ladder problems and then just like home and then just do the same with the ladder for like. So, there's like a set of all the problems. I'm like, that's how you do this one, I'll take it that one. But then you throw in an extra, like, well, yeah, you add yeah. a bullet point to my never ending list. But the list is never ending. Yeah. I think Jordan is not saying this. I can do any problem and like I can do like a like one of these problems or I can do this one and just like put it down. Okay. What were you gonna say? I would say like if 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 I could like use like my notes, I think I'd do okay because I know kind of the steps. I think 
and it's and without it, I think it's more like I have to almost almost not memorize, but like you know, figure out like okay, these are the steps. So I have them almost like in my brain, at least for this type of problem. Because the other ones, there's less steps essentially, so it's easier to just remember them. Well, I want to. I'm trying to move you away from memorizing steps, though. Well, that's how you always go. I know, that's not and that's unfortunate. Because in the real world, if I'm solving a problem, I can have resources, and then I can apply it. But I understand it still. I just didn't have to memorize all like, my resources. But a test, you're like, you have to memorize everything to know how to do it. So what did you have to memorize? What What did you have to know? I test, I'll have to memorize the steps I took to get to each step. I'm trying to move you away from that. And, Jer and Jeremiah just said that's how we've always done things. I get that. Um, I we have to get away from that. We have to be problem okay. solvers on the, the, the each level. But that's that's a key that that one both point we just said to find the minimum with the derivative is zero. That's that's a huge takeaway from calculus. That you need to know that when you find the derivative and set it equal to zero, you're finding either the maximum or minimum. Okay. I think uh you've already said. Uh I'm just worried about problems that use three. Oh okay. What what's what's worrisome about that? Uh, I don't know. I just, I would love to end up in this. We haven't done that yet. So, you can just talk about it. Sure, let's take a look at one. Um, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you had your hand up just a second ago, or someone else did? Uh, I do. Okay, what were you going to say while I'm doing it? I was going to say, like, what does that have to do with, like, like, uh, so what are, what are, you're just saying exactly what he just said? No, he said uh, he said trim. Are you a number three box or a general box? He wasn't here for that. He wasn't here. Well, why would you ask? He thought you were. Oh, you're still. You're still. You wouldn't get it. I'm not. Yeah, you're on the same box. 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 Yeah, you're on the Okay, so listen, here's one where this is, this angle is getting bigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots of things. What's that? Line paper. I could draw lines on this, but no. Okay. So here's a trick one. So again, we need to think back to what we know. How about trig? So Katoa, stuff like that. Um, but uh, you know, not only that, for all of these problems, we have to boil it down to relating the rate that you're given to the rate that you're looking for. Or even better, relate the quantity that you're given or that you can find out to the quantity that um, you're looking for. And then take the derivative, and that'll give you the rate. Yeah. So how quickly is X growing? Is it? I don't know. Let's let's talk about this. What? Well, it is, for sure. But what does X represent? Yeah, sure, the height of that triangle. And what does dx dt represent?
what letter do I, what Greek letter do I use? What's that? Delta. Right? What does delta mean? It has nothing to do with physics. What does delta mean? Change. It means change. So write that down. Delta, delta means change. That's why they call it the delta force. When they want to change in an area, they send in the delta. You're changing it. That's capital. That's just capital. This is lowercase. That's all. Changing equal. Okay. Delta means change. So you could read this, Jeremiah, you could read this as the change in X over the change in time. Okay? change in x x is the length of this side of the triangle and that we're looking um for what that is okay so i really want you to understand that because your question seemed like a yes or no question or something but it's a it's a, actually a kind of a deep understanding question yes but, but the fact that you had a question i wanted to make sure that you understood what delta x means the change in x Okay, so we're looking for dx dt. We don't have that. How can we find some something that relates this angle to x? Cosine. Cosine. Cosine theta equals one over x going a. Tangent. Oh, tangent. So could tell. Tangent of this is x over. Okay, the tangent of theta equals x over phi. Or even easier, think of it as one fifth x. Right? So now this, this here's, the, here's the problem with the, the, the folks who like to know the steps for a particular kind of problem. A subtle change to this problem will make it different steps. So you have to look at where you're at every time and say, how do I get to the next step? Remember the river and the stones on the river? Okay. Um, I didn't take attendance. Thomas and Carter. Thomas and Carter. Can Hunter hear you? Who's that? Is anyone in there? So now we take the derivative of both sides, right? Because we don't know. Um, well, I mean, we, we could just plug in x, but we, we're looking for the change in x. We need this to say dx dt, right? So if we take the derivative of the left side, what is it? Awesome. So this is one of the rates that we know. Then the derivative of one fifth x with relationship to time. So it's well, it's one fifth dx dt, right? We have almost everything that we need. Almost. We know d theta dt. We're given that, two radians per second. But we don't know theta. Just the five 
So, okay, so kind of. Not quite the tangent of it. Uh, yeah, so you have to do inverse. So, because you have to find the angle. And that's that's from either geometry or algebra two or pre-calc, wherever you learn that. Okay. Now, when I say inverse. I don't mean flip it. I don't mean find the reciprocal. I mean use on your calculator the inverse tangent function. No, not that particular one. Probably not, unless it was like pi over six. Unless it was like one half over three over two. Which is just you would start with one of the units of one. So if you know that this side is root three over two, and you know this side is one half, you can find theta because theta is pi over six on the unit circle. That's like one of the main. Well, that's what I just did. Get that? I know that the angle is equal to this over this. I wouldn't use a calculator. I did the inverse tangent in my part. That, that, that's what you're doing. You're finding the inverse tangent when you find the angle given this and this. That's the what you did. I remember it was like one was when you're finding it inside and one was when you're finding it outside. Well, okay, so it depends on where the variable is. If the variable is over here, then, it, then you're finding the angle. If the variable is inside here, then you're finding the tangent. And so there's no negative one there. If it's inside, inside there, it's not negative, so it's not the I, I, You're pointing at the board. Um, oh, okay. Well, I don't know if you were pointing somewhere else. So the difference is tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, right? Length. And the inverse tangent, they're just two different things of the length of opposite length divided by adjacent length equals the angle. Those are two different functions. Yeah. Okay. One. Yes. Yep. This is the number that you put in. Well, I guess maybe that's the number you put in. If you, It really depends on what you're trying to solve for. So what is the angle, by the way? 1.107? Okay, thank you. Radians. That's pi is already in there, so don't even worry about it. Um, so then you can solve for dx dt. And where did we use the 10 to find the angle? So that's we had to use it. So then we got um, the secant squared of 1.107 times 2 radians per second times 5 equals dx dt, whatever that comes out to be. So secant is what? Um, 1 over cosine. So 1 divided by cosine of 1.107 squared times 10. Fifty. So I, I know that it can be challenging to like look at a problem that you've never seen before and, and, and solve it. 
you just have to apply the different maths that you've learned every time. Because if I said to you, oh, is the bell going to ring? Is it advisory? Um, just bring your hand up. Yeah. Oh. I'm just like, to be perfectly honest. I, I would do not. Okay. Um, no, I just think it would be best to have the test like next class. Just because I feel like then we're going to, I'm going to forget. He does not speak for the rest of the class. Listen, I agree with you. Listen, what you're going to Because if we, if we spend more time on that, so like if we just, we're not going to get anywhere at this point. I agree. But, um, you, you as a group, right, and you're, you're very test anxious, yes. all yeah. of you. you. So unfortunately, I need to give you tests. If I could just sit here and, and talk calculus with you and, and unit circle stuff all day, that'd be great. But uh, oh, no yeah, I wouldn't be, yeah, there's nowhere to hide. Do you have a question? Well, I, I think I need to Is that a yes or a no? I think we need to review. Stop. Let it finish. Do you have a question? Okay, the hand. Do you have a question? So, in the calculator, I got like 49 points. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was just saying it's about 50. No, no, it's around to the thousands. I was just. Okay, folks, pay attention here. We are going to have a summative next class. We've, we've done this to death. I'm going to provide for you some practice problems. Okay. The summative very likely will be on a snow day, which means it would have to be on Tuesday if there's snow on Friday. If there's no snow on Friday, we're having a test. That's why I'm saying that. Now, um, the summative, I'm going to give you a choice of problems. Okay? To get the most points, you can you get a, a 10 out of, out of, out of 9. It will be hard. Bonus points. Oh, bonus. Oh. To get an A, there'll be a certain set of problems. Okay? And if you just want to be, there'll be a set of problems. Okay. A hard one. Harder than some. Like, I'm going to say, I just said, I'm going to send you guys some. Wait, before you guys keep asking questions, I, I do want to address one other thing. Um, so a while back, there was a test that we took uh, that I neglected to put into Aspen. And you guys did really well on it, I just, but I just didn't put it into Aspen. It was, in, it was at the beginning, it was like December 1st. Oh, I don't know if I did too well. I don't know if I did too well. Yeah, I think you got a hundred. That was the one we did. Oh, that was the one we didn't put the test into the. No, I didn't. So that was the one we did with the sub, right? We didn't. No, that was. Well, so we don't know what we got. That was later. Well, you can you can easily look in Aspen. Look in, take a look in Aspen. You'll see how you did. Um, that was quarter two, and I just never put it in, and I apologize for the test because I was at home. Oh. Oh, last night, and I was like, you doing some grading, and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Third floor. Sports equipment. I can't understand what you're saying. Uh, I don't know. 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 I
Shivani, what's your question? Uh, on the test, will be also calculation like final or even complete expression or just from. It's related, right? Related, right? Oh, just the. Are you sending out practice problems? Yes, I'm sure I got it. Um, I have a question about Saturday. Yes. So, okay, you have a class question. Yeah, yeah. Looks good. Um, uh, sat Saturday's one is being announced and stuff. I was just going to ask you about the sun. I was missing it originally. Yeah. But I did that. I can see if we can have an assignment. It was been updated. I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't check this morning. So. Uh, last time I tried to last things. So. Okay. All right. Can I hear about this? Okay. Saturday. Um, so I have to go pick up the kids. Yeah. Um, I can take like one or two other people, but I'm just going to grab it. That's all. There's no point in driving. So turn it. Turn it. Advisory. Um, I think we're going to have to do it from home. I'm going to talk to Mrs. Taylor. If there's a snow day on Saturday, on Friday, they're going to want to clear the parking lot over the weekend. Yeah. Why does this always happen when it snows? <laughs> it seems, doesn't it seem that way? Yeah. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is just send out the link to everybody using Slack and email and whatnot for the stream. I think it takes place at 1.30 is when mm -hmm. it starts. Um, because that's when I can go pick up the kit. Yeah. No, wait, no it ends at 1.30. It ends at 1.30. Because that's when I can go pick up the kit. So um, that's, that's what we're going to have to do. There's not, right. not, we don't have a lot of options as far as that goes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And also, can we hear the rules that you assigned for practice? Yes. Thank you. Sure. Did you want to pass Yeah. And he's on the floor right behind you. Behind there. Sarah, can you see that pass right there? Fourth floor, Christian. Okay, so we actually do have something. Yeah. Oh, they are closed. 